Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. The line is never busy. Tell him what you want. Oh, the line is never busy. Tell him what you want. The line is never busy. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. I don't want to be the only one that's glad to be here. I say, is there anybody besides me in this house that's glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? If you know that you're glad to be in God's house, you ought to raise your hand and tell the Lord, thank you for sparing my life. Now, I feel better now, knowing that I'm not traveling on the road by myself, that there's somebody else in here is glad just to be in the house of the Lord. Just glad to be in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm so glad that God is the same God when it's raining uh, that he is when the sun is shining. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And the same thing that he can do for me when the sun is shining. Watch this now. He's able to do the same thing when it's raining on the outside. So whenever I come in God's house, I come expecting a blessing. I come expecting a miracle. Amen. Other words, listen, you ought to come in here and knowing that worship is the sky is the sky of the limit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
fucking religion. I want to know what's your name on the wall, yeah. I want to know because you love everybody, yeah. If you been baptized, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to know, do you have your religion? I want to know, is your name on the wall? Yeah. I want to know, do you love everybody like the Bible? Says, I want to know if you've been baptized. Yeah, 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 yeah. Each son shall follow them, them that believe. And if you trust in the Lord, you shall receive goodness and mercy. Shall follow you, and if you just keep the faith, he'll see you through. Help me say yes, say yes, certainly, Lord, certainly, Lord. Help me say yes, say yes, certainly, Lord. Follow them, them that believe. And if you trust in the Lord, you shall receive goodness and mercy. Shall follow you. And if you just keep the faith, he'll see you through. Help me say yes, say yes, certainly Lord. I love you, Lord. If you love him, say yes, say yes, certainly Lord. Certainly Lord. Help me say yes, say yes, certainly Lord. Certainly Lord. Help me say yes, say yes, certainly Lord. Come on, y'all. Let's give out choir. Come on, give this choir another hand. Amen. Thank you, choir, for a job well done. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Greater Rose of Sharon. Good morning. Amen. We give God all praise and honor for being here on today. And I just wanted to stand just to give a, a brief, brief a word of encouragement to all of our youth that are heading back to school on tomorrow. Uh, we know that 
some have already started. Um, we know that the teachers and administrators are already uh, hard at work, and tomorrow is going to be a big day. Amen. So I just wanted to uh, tell all of you, uh, do your best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, study hard, uh, and, and just keep God first in all that you do. Uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you keep the Lord first in everything, He's going to see you through. Uh, the first day of school is going to be challenging for some. Uh, those that are transitioning from uh, elementary to middle school, from middle school to high school, uh, the first day might be a little intimidating. Uh, but you can get through it. <laughs> uh, be sure you uh, keep the Lord first. Be, uh, don't be afraid to pray. <laughs> pray and ask the Lord to give you strength, to give you courage. When you're opening your books for the first time and you see uh, how challenging some of the tests are going to be, go ahead and pray. You're going to need God to help you. <laughs> but be encouraged. Do your best to all the teachers, uh, staff, administrators. Uh, we know that it's challenging dealing with the youth of this day. Uh, but just keep doing what you do. Uh, God is going to, uh, God will see you through also. Yeah, yeah. Now, you may not be an A student, but just do your best. That's, right, that's, right. that's what God expects from all of us, is yeah. our best. If your best is all C's, praise God, just do your best. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say is that even though you may not bring home straight A's, you don't have to be a disruption. <laughs> all right? All right? <laughs> so don't be a troublemaker. Don't give your teachers a problem. You know, go in, behave yourself. Don't disturb those that are trying to learn. <laughs> so be a blessing to uh, your teacher. Go in with a positive attitude. Say good morning. Uh, encourage the teacher. They're there to encourage you, but the teachers need encouragement also. Uh, so do your best. Behave yourself and just keep God first. Listen, tomorrow is going to be a good day. Yes, you all are going to gonna be successful. <laughs> If you're going into elementary for the first time, God is listening. It's going to be a good day. When you get to middle school for the first time, it's going to be a good day. High school, you only got three years to go. High school, listen, it's going to be a good day. So just do your best, study hard, work hard, keep God first, and God's going to see you through. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Cross. Pastor Cross saying to our ch uh, children, amen, we need to just stay focused. Just stay focused on what you're there for. Amen. At this time, I will uh, uh, praise dancers. Amen. Let's come on, put your hand together.
Refreshing in the spirit, preparing me for greater.
I'm tired. I'm tired. That, that, that song right there about got me. Oh, I thank God for Jesus. With his help. I'm going all the way. How many want to go all the way with Jesus? Let me see you wave your hand. If you want to go all the way with Jesus. Hallelujah in this place. You can't stop me. Can't turn me. I'm going with Jesus. All the way. Listen, sometimes I have to fast and pray. Sometimes I have to steal away. Sometimes I have to cry out, help me, Lord. Sometimes I have to fast and pray. Sometimes I have to steal away. Sometimes I have to cry out, help me, Lord. I know my home of peace. The Lord will take care of me. Go with Jesus. All the way. I'm going with Jesus. Go with Jesus. All the way. I'm going with Jesus. Turn me up. I'm going with Jesus. Keep it right there. I'm going with Jesus. Oh, yes, I am. Are you going with Jesus? Are you going with Jesus? Don't you want to go? Don't you want to go? Hey, I'm going.
everybody going with them. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm going. Come on, y'all. The songwriter said, I'm going with Jesus all the way. Not part of the way. Not some of the way. But I'll go with him all the way. Bird and heavy, I'll go with him. Wake it dark, I'll go with him. One day, Peter, everybody else had walked away. What you gonna do, Peter? Peter said, I don't know nobody else. I don't know nobody else that I can tell my trouble to. And they will solve my problem. So Peter said, In short, Lord, I'm gonna stay with you. It makes no difference what other folks do. I'm gonna stay with the Lord. If I stay with the Lord, and if my faith is right, I say, if I, if I stay with God, and if my faith is in order, I can have what God has for me before I get it. Somebody catch that up why. I can have it before I possess it. Ah. I'll go with you all the way. In the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. Beginning at Verse number one, if you have it, let it be known by saying amen. amen. And when King Arad, the Canaanites, who dealt in the south, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spy, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people unto my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened unto the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they destroyed them and their cities and he called the name of the place Hermon. Herma. And verse number four says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea, and compassed the land of Edom. And the souls of the people were much discouraged because of the way. I want to talk this morning. I, I want to use for a subject don't allow your journey to get the best of you. Don't allow your journey to get the best of you. It has been said before that life is a journey. Can I get a witness? 
And I, I stopped by to let you know that I uh, encourage you. Listen, don't allow your journey to get the best of you. Amen. Listen, life itself is a journey. And if the truth is told, none of us know where it will take us. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Nobody knows where this journey will take you and I. But it's one thing we got to stay prayed up and keep our faith in order that the journey will not, amen, cause us to be discouraged. Because when you get discouraged on your journey, uh, if you can believe me or not, but the journey will take you under. So I will encourage you this morning, listen, don't allow your journey to get the best of you. Since, since none of us know, amen, where, amen, our journey will take us. And you know, if the truth is told, nobody really know our next move. You don't know your next move. Oh, yeah, we plan. But that James said, we ought to say, if it's the Lord. Y'all don't hear me. It, it, there's nothing wrong with planning. But in all of your planning, if the truth is really told, you really don't know your next move. But because we have faith in God, faith in him will cause us to get up and plan for tomorrow. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I, I, I stopped by to let you know that, listen, you don't know where this journey is gonna, gonna take you. You don't know where it's gonna, you're gonna wind up. And the reason why is because God was the one that laid out your route. It was set by God. And if your route is set by God, if the journey is set by God, many times you don't know where you're headed. Where are you going to wind up at? But that's the reason why we have to trust God when you can't trace him. You, you hear what I'm saying? You don't know all of the time what God has up his sleeve. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? There was some thing that God has up his sleeve. And he keep them up his sleeve. Because if he took them out of the right sleeve and put them up under your sleeve, you wouldn't be able to deal with them right now. So God got some things up his sleeve. And he just tell us to just trust him. I know the journey. Listen, I know the journey might get rough sometimes. And I know, I know you're not in familiar territory. I, I know I'm leading you somewhere that you've never been before. I, I know my leadership will call you to get out the box that you're in. See, the box that we are in, we are familiar with uh, uh, the territory that we are in. But God, when God laid out the route, when God began to lead us, sometime the journey, amen, if we're not mighty careful, will cause us to grow weary. Do, do y'all hear what I'm saying? And God has, God, listen, God, the route, God has, he set the route, Amen. And, and, and most, all, most of the time, the route will cause us to grow up. Somebody said, Lord, why am I, why, why are you taking me this way? God said, by now, you should have been already spiritually grown. But you're still in the baby stage. So God said, I got you taking this route here. And my purpose for taking you this route is to grow you up. You still get mad and walking away from the church when folks look at you the way you don't want them to look at you. So God said, let me take you this route. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God, sometimes God takes us in the territory where folks look at us with crooked eyes. God says, it's just to grow you up. It makes no difference how bad folks look at you. God has said, if you have faith in me and keep the faith, I'll take care of you. You've got to remember that the battle is not yours. Huh? The battle belongs to the Lord. God said, some of, some of you all trying to fight a battle that is not yours. And, and listen, you can't win your own battle. So God said, the battle that you're trying to fight belongs to me. 
Huh? But God said, don't get this courage with your journey. See, some of us, hey, listen, listen, when we accept Christ as our Savior, we were saved at that point from the penalty of sin. But just because you uh, have been saved from the penalty of sin, I need you to know that you still have not been fully delivered. <laughs> You've been saved from the penalty, but you still have to deal with the present not in the power of sin. So right now we are wrestling with the power of sin. So that says salvation has more than one step. First step is being saved from the penalty of sin. Second step, we are still being saved from the power of sin. And the third step, when life battle has been fought, we will be freed from the presence of sin. So the Lord is saying to us, listen, just hold on. Don't be discouraged with your journey right now. Because as you stay focused, I'm taking you somewhere. I'm leading you somewhere. Jesus said, I come that you might have life. And have life more abundantly. And God said, if you just hold on and stay focused. Then when you, meet, when you read Matthew 6 and 33, you ought to be able to shout from afar. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else will be added unto you. So it's one thing, the journey that we own. If you're not, it, it will either grow us up or it will cause us to be discouraged. Don't nobody want to be lied on. But sometime on this journey, you're going to be lied on. Some, don't nobody want to be talked about. But sometime on this journey, you're going to be talked about. And y'all you hear what I'm saying? But, and you know what? Really, it, it shouldn't worry you. If, you, if, you, if the song that you're singing is the truth, it's not about me. That's the church say that. It's all about the Lord. We always saying that. It's not about me. It's all about God. Well, really, if that's the truth, for when folks talk about you, it shouldn't make you no difference. Um, don't, don't be discouraged with your journey. Sometime on this journey, seems like we make two steps forward and three or four steps backwards on this journey. But I want you to know that God is, is leading us somewhere. They have been set free out of Egypt, but they have not been delivered. They left out of Egypt. On their way to their promised land, which was the land of Canaan. And somewhere between Egypt and Canaan, they got discouraged on the journey. And somewhere between the day and the hour that you confess hope in Jesus Christ, somewhere between there and heaven, you're going to get discouraged along the way. But I'm here to let you know the, the whole on to God's unchanging hand. God had a way of making things all right. If God lay out the journey, you are able to make it. I, let me say that again. I say if God planned your journey, if God lay out your journey, and God loves you, you got to remember God loves you. You are God's child. And if God planned the journey, God lay out the journey, guess what? You can make it. But there is a prescription 
for making the journey. You got to trust God. You got to have faith in God. Trust it in God and have faith in God. That will call you to make the journey. You can't make this journey by doubting God. So many folks have threw in the towel because they didn't have faith in God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I need you to know God don't put you on no journey that you are not able to make the journey. Listen, if God puts you in a journey, if God gives you a work to do, there is no way God's going to, watch this here now, there is no way God's going to give you a mission. There's no way God's going to assign a project to your hand that you can complete the mission, that you can complete the project without having to call on the Lord. Why would God give you something that you can do completely by yourself? God don't do stuff like that. God will give you a mission. And listen, if you say, well, listen, child, what I'm doing, I don't, I ain't had to call on the Lord now time. Well, I got news for you. Most likely, God, that's not a godly mission there. That's just something that you are doing yourself. But if God give you a mission, every now and then, you're going to have to call on the Lord. The reason why, is that's when God get the glory, when we are doing what he tells us to do. And when we have to call on, on him, that's when God gets glory out of our life. And I want to let you know, when I want to ask you a question, have God got in the glory out of your life lately? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen, I want you to know, it, it is, watch this here now, it is the struggles of the journey. Let me say that again. It is the struggles of your journey that grows you up that calls you to walk like Jesus that calls you to talk like Jesus that calls you to look like Jesus Paul said all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to him. his purpose so what you're going through right now if you don't think it make any sense it might not make sense to you but I just tell you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because of the difficulties of the journey, Israel began to protest God's provision. Because of the difficulty of the journey. Look at them now. They're complaining about the manna from heaven. When the manna, the bread first starts falling, they ate it up. But now they done become discouraged with the journey. Now they done start complaining about God's provision. What God is doing for them. But I heard Paul, Paul said in Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 11, he said, I've learned. Huh. To be content in whatever <laughs> state that I'm in. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But Paul said, I had to learn these things. Paul said, I had to read God's word. And then I had to learn how to trust God's word. Paul said, I had to learn God's word. Then I had to learn how to apply God's word to my life. He said, I learned how to be content. If I had a handful, I was still happy. If my hand was empty, I was still praising God. Paul said, if you learn how to be content, you will not desert your journey. Have mercy, Lord. I'm getting ready to sit down now. But the Bible said in verse number one that the children of God, when they left out of Egypt, they were on their way to the promised land. Can I get a witness? 
And listen, their promised land, God promised the land to them. But in order to get to the promised land, they had to go through some things on the journey. First of all, they were defeated by the Canaanites on their journey. And when they were defeated by the Canaanites, the Bible said that the Canaanites, the king of the Canaanites, amen, attacked them and caught some of, and kept some of them prisoner. But then the Bible said that Israel, they prayed a prayer and said, Lord, we want to make another vow to you. That we want to make a vow to you right now that if you will deliver them into our hands, we will ultimately destroy the Canaanites. And the record is God delivered them into Israel's hand. And Israel, amen, destroyed the Canaanites. But look what happened in verse number four. The Bible said in, after God had done, after they made the vow, and God, amen, honored their vow, and it wasn't long before they began to complain. The Bible said in verse number four, and they journeyed from Mount Hall and the way by way of the, the Red Sea. Listen, they had to buy, they was on their way to Canaan. And when they, they had to bypass Edom because they would not give Moses, the king would not give Moses the right to pass through Edom. So God had to take them around by the Red Sea. And sometimes we're wondering why we can't just cut across the field and pick up our blessing. Sometimes we're wondering why we just can't reach down and pick it up like John did. Sometimes we're wondering why do we have to go around by the Red Sea. God said that sometime I got to send you that way in order to grow you up. Can I get a witness? The Bible said in verse number four, they began to complain. They began to get discouraged and they began to complain because of their journey. And I want you to know it's a sad thing when you start complaining to the Lord. The Bible said when they complained about the bread that God had been giving them. The Bible said in verse number six that God sent out fire. Since you're going to complain, I'm going to send some fiery serpent. Since you're going to complain. By the way, God said as good as I've been to you, as far as I have brought you. I brought you uh, across the Red Sea. And now you're going to complain. The Bible said God sent out some fiery serpent. And every time one would complain, uh, and he would get snake bit. Every time they complained, uh, snake would bite him. And then they began to call out to Moses and cry out to Moses and ask Moses to, to pray in their behalf unto the Lord. And the Bible said Moses went down in prayer to God's people. Can I get a witness? The Bible said in verse number seven, therefore the people came unto Moses and said, we have sinned. Other words, God said, what I put on you is going to make you confess your sin. And sometime on the journey, God will carry you through some areas that will make you confess your sin. Because if you don't confess your sin, your sin don't get no better. If you don't confess your sin, you don't really get any better in the sight of the Lord. They spoke and said, listen, we have spoken against God. We have sinned against thee. Now they're saying that 
I pray unto the Lord that he would take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Then God told, I'm getting ready to sit down, but God told Moses, Moses, you see those fiery serpents. Here's what I want you to do. I made those serpents. I made the one that bit Israel. I made the one that called around and bit them when they complained. But then God told Moses, what I want you to do, I want you to make a fiery serpent. I want you to make this one here. I want you to make it in the image of the one that I made and put it on the pole. I'm going somewhere, y'all. And when you put it on the pole, you tell Israel that the time they get bit, if they look up to the brave and serpent, they will be healed. And can't you see Moses? Y'all don't hear me. Billy Neck Serpent put him on the pole. Now he tell Israel if you get bit, God told me to tell you to look to the snake if you really want to live. Look at Israel now. Listen, that's an image of the same snake that bit my dad and killed him. Now you want me to look to him if I want to live. That's an image of the same snake that bit my children and they died. But now you want me to look to that snake if I want to live. I can hear the children here just say, it don't make no sense. Why should I look to a, a snake that bit my child and my child died? Well, let me tell you one thing. I want y'all to be quiet now because I want you to hear what I got to say. It was a live snake. That brought death. Now you said a dead snake gonna bring life. Well, I need you to know it didn't start. Death and life didn't start there. This thing started in the book of Exodus when God got ready to deliver his people. The live ram couldn't deliver God's folks. They had to kill the lamb, a dead lamb, and they took the lamb blood and put it over the doorpost, and God's folks were delivered. Other words, the, the live ram was about death, but the dead ram brought about life. Can I get a witness? Yeah, that, uh, that live snake brought about death, but the dead snake on the pole, uh, if you want life, uh, you got to look at it and live. Paul told me to tell you, uh, that same snake, uh, listen, that lamb uh, in the book of Exodus, uh, the same serpent uh, in the book of Numbers, uh, it pointed toward uh, the lamb on the hill. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, the lamb uh, in the book of Exodus, uh, as long as he was alive, uh, it didn't help God's people. Uh, but when they slain the lamb uh, and took the blood and put over the dope God God's people were delivered. Uh, uh, can I get a witness? Uh, have mercy, Lord, uh, the same snake um, when he was alive, he was deadly. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, 
But when he died, when they put his image on the cross, and then he began to give life. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I'm not through right now. Uh, watch this right here. When Jesus uh, was walking the streets of Jerusalem uh, for 33 years, uh, as long as he was walking, uh, as long as he was alive, uh, I did not have uh, spiritual life. Uh, I was still dead uh, as long as Christ was alive. But I found it. What Friday? Y'all don't hear me. Uh, uh, when he dropped his head and it locks up his shoulder, uh, I said, when he died, uh, at that point, uh, I received uh, a spiritual life. Uh, uh, can I get a witness? Uh, so the Lord said, uh, look to the serpent uh, if you want to live. Uh, if you look to the serpent, uh, uh, listen, you're looking to the cross. Uh, on Calvary. Anybody know he died? I said, anybody know he died? Ah, he died! On one Friday evening, the Bible said he died. But early, 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 early. Sunday morning, he got up Anybody know he got up? I say, anybody know he got up? If you know he got up, uh, uh, why don't you say yeah? If you know he got up, uh, uh, why don't you say yeah? Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! Ah, yeah! He got up. I said, he got up. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That I might have life. That I might live. Don't get discouraged with your journey. Don't allow your journey to get the best of you. You're on a journey. Listen, you're, listen, you're not going to go all the, through all of the places that you want to go. There are some places that your journey will take you just to grow you up. You see, in the midst of our struggle, that's when we tend to know God. At no struggles, no hardship, you will not learn and know God. A person that never been through hardship and never been through struggles and God never had to bring you through, the only thing they talk about is what mama did, what daddy did, what he did for mama and what he did for daddy. Well, if he did something for mama and daddy, he ought to do something for you. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? In the midst of our struggles, that's how we grow up. That's how we learn God. Y'all in the midst of our struggle. And when you go through it, when God bring you through it, when God pull you through it, when God pull you all the way through it, and then you can look back on it, and you can tell somebody else, it's nothing but a test.